you know, reading this, after 1980, when you could look back and see that M. King Hubbard was really right about the United States, shouldn't our leadership have sat down and said, gee, what are we going to do about that? One final thought I should like to leave with you. High energy consumption has always been a prerequisite of political power. The tendency is for political power to be concentrated in an ever smaller number of countries, ultimately the nation with, which control the largest energy resources will become dominant. If we give thought to the problem of energy resources, if we act wisely and in time to conserve what we have and prepare well for necessary future changes, we shall ensure the dominant position for our own country. Have we done any of that? This is the father of our nuclear submarine, Hyman Rickover. Great advice. The next chart gives a perspective that Hyman Rickover uh, talked about. And this looks at the um, age of oil. It goes back to 1630. It could go back to uh, the time of Christ, and the chart wouldn't change because the amount of energy we were using, the world was using, was so small it wouldn't show above the baseline here. And then we entered the industrial age. The brown line there is uh, wood. We started with steam engines and fueling them with wood, and then we found coal, and that's the black line there. And then we found gas and oil. Wow, look what happened when we found gas and oil. Now, we're going to see this curve again, and we're going to see it again and again. A very steep rise with this uh, very long time in the abscissa, that rise is really very steep. We'll see some other charts where we have stretched out the time and the rise is not so steep. But notice what happens at the very top up there. It fell off and then rose again. That's the recession of the 70s, the Arab oil embargo. You know, you need to thank them for doing that because we woke up. Look what would have happened if that hadn't happened and that exponential curve kept on rising. It would be off the top of the chart. Our next chart shows that um, in a different perspective. This is called the uh, oil chart. And if you had only one chart to look at to inform you, this would probably be the one that you would want to uh, look at. Uh, the curve that we saw in the last one, that red curve, I said you would see it again and again. And here it is. This is the curve. Now, it was very steep there because uh, uh, they had compressed this time, so it went up steep. And this is that drop off in the 70s. Notice what would happen if we hadn't become more efficient as a result of that. This curve would be off the chart by the year 2011. The uh, vertical bars here show the discovery of oil. And we started discovering it in the 40s, and boy, in, this, in the 50s and 60s and 70s, huge peak in the 70s. And uh, then by 1980, the black line here represents the uh, use of oil. By 1980, we were using as much oil as we were finding. And after 1980, we always have used more oil than we found that year. But no matter, because there's a huge reserve back here. So we are now filling this space between what we found and what we use by uh, dipping into those reserves that we have. How long will they last? Uh, this chart indicates the future discoveries will be on a an ever-decreasing slope. It won't be smooth like that because this has been up and down. That'll be up and down. But I want you to make your own judgment as to how much of that we're going to find. By the way, this chart was what, 04 was when this chart was created. And they were predicting that the world was going to reach its maximum oil production uh, probably about, what, uh, 10 or so there. As a matter of fact, uh, they were somewhat optimistic, as we'll see a bit later, the peak oil production. Oh, the next chart shows some of that. And we can look at the next chart. Um, there are two uh, entities in the world that do a very good job of keeping track of how much oil we pump and use. Of course, we use all we pump. There's no big reservoir of oil anywhere. And this is the EIA and the IEA. One of them is a uh, creature of the OECD in Europe, and the other is a part of our uh, own Department of Energy. And these are their... Uh, 
records of how much oil we have produced. And notice that for about the last uh, six years now, we have um, been plateaued in oil production at about 84 million barrels a day. We're stuck there for about the last six years at 84 million barrels a day. When demand goes up and the increasing economies in um, China and India and the developing world, the demand is really going up. When demand goes up and there is a constant supply, what happens to prices? You know, 50, 80, 100, 147 finally. And that high price of oil combined with a silly housing bubble that we produced in this country and the world's economies kind of near collapsed. And then oil fell to a bit under $40 a barrel. But as soon as the economies picked up again, the price of oil increased, and now it's what? Roughly a hundred dollars a barrel. The uh, next chart uh, looks at uh, the world picture. And the dark blue on the bottom here is conventional oil. Notice that it uh, increases up to, they have it at about 2006. There is now general recognition by experts all over the world. Even the naysayers like Exxon Mobil and CIRA, Cambridge Energy Research Associates, now concede that oil peaked in about 2006. But we have had unconventional oil. And we have had natural gas liquids. We're providing more and more natural gas, and there's natural gas liquids. You won't probably put that in your fuel tank because it's propane and butane and uh, that kind of um, energy source. This chart uh, admits that uh, we have reached a peak, and it's going to fall off. Doesn't this look very much like Hubbard's curve for our country? Falling off. Now, I'm sorry I don't have the next chart that they created just two years after this, but let me tell you the differences. The chart they created two years after this has two main differences. One, it went out to 2035 instead of 2030. Notice that the total oil production, adding up all of these various uh, sources of oil, came to 106 million barrels a day, they thought, by 2030. Now, just two years later, this was an 08 chart. By 10, they had produced a chart that said that the peak production five years later was going to be only 96 million barrels a day. They had lowered their expectations. And they also had lowered their expectations of how much oil we're going to be getting from our current fields because this line had dropped off considerably lower in their chart just two years later. Now, they have our availability of oil ever going up and up, down to only 96 million barrels a day in 2035 in their next chart. But the contribution to that is very little of it comes from our conventional oil. Most of it is going to come from oil from fields that we have discovered and not developed. That's the light blue. And the red there is from fields yet to be discovered. And that disparity is even more acute in the chart that they developed just two years later. I will tell you with considerable confidence that those two wedges are not going to occur in anything like that magnitude. The world inevitably will follow the same curve that the United States followed. We reached a peak in 1970. We have been falling off ever since. Today, in spite of finding oil in Alaska and the Gulf of Mexico, in spite of drilling more oil wells than all the rest of the world put together, today we produce half the oil we did in 1970. This relates to the discussion that we're having about the budget and about uh, Medicare. Um, Paul Ryan had a bill which he called the Roadmap. And it was a way to get at the problem of our debt and deficit. And it was pretty tough. It was so tough that only about uh, 12 or 13 of us signed on to that Roadmap. 
And then we came to the budget debate, and um, all but four Republicans voted for that budget. I was almost the fifth one not to, because I didn't think that it uh, was going to solve our problem. It didn't cut enough. We weren't going to balance the budget. Um, Paul says that his um, budget uh, pays down the debt, but it doesn't balance for 25 years. And to make it balance in 25 years, he projects fairly robust growth. That robust growth will not occur. Because as soon as the world's economy picks up and the demand for oil picks up, since we have done nothing that we were advised to do by Hyman Rickover more than 50 years ago in planning an orderly transition to other sources of energy, when the price of oil goes up again to $125, $150 a barrel, the world's economy will be supposed. But even if you believe that our economy is going to pick up, and it won't, it still takes 25 years to balance the budget. So what we're talking about tonight in this energy thing really, really is important in our budget debate as well. Uh, the next chart is an interesting one. And what it shows is, and this was several years ago, before the peaking of oil, and it shows the, um, uh, the exports in the world, and when they thought oil would peak, and here's the year they thought it would peak, and some of them a very long time from, from now. Uh, well, Dufay said before 2009, and it certainly was before 2009. But it occurred earlier than, well, 2006 and 2007. It occurred in 2006. The next chart shows exactly these same things in a pictorial form. So you can see some of them, uh, they weren't going to miss the bet, were they? They could occur any time during those many, many years there. Uh, but there's almost unanimous agreement now that oil did peak in 2006. The next chart shows four uh, studies. There are five reports, but there were only four studies because two reports came from the same study. Your government paid for uh, four different studies. Two of them issued in 05, and two of them issued in 07. Um, there was a second iteration of the DOE report here that occurred in O, that occurred a little later, but 05 and, uh, and 07. They all said essentially the same thing, that the peaking of oil was either present or imminent with potentially devastating consequences. Now, why did your government pay for four reports? Because they didn't like what the first report said. And they got the second one and it said the same thing. They didn't like that either. And so they ordered a third one and they didn't like what that report said either. And so the president finally ordered the National Petroleum Council report. The next chart is one of the quotes from the first report, which is a big SAIC report. And Dr. Robert Hirsch was the leading investigator, so it's frequently called the Hirsch report. And I have a couple of quotes fr from this. The peaking of World oil production presents the U.S. and the world with an unprecedented risk management problem. As peaking is approached, liquid fuel prices and price volatility will increase dramatically up to $149 a barrel. And without timely mitigation, the economic, social, and political costs will be unprecedented. The next chart. And this was all out there since 05. World, oil, world production of conventional oil will reach a maximum and decline thereafter. They said that with quite some confidence because it happened in the United States unquestionably. And the United States has to be a microcosm of the world 